I'm Allison Castor from UFG Insurance, a proud sponsor of this year's event. Like many great companies, UFG was born from one person's idea. That idea was to form a stock insurance company in Iowa back in 1946. 75 years later, we're a successful, publicly traded, and locally headquartered company, proud to call Iowa our home. At this year's Iowa Ideas event, we at UFG hope you find inspiration in the stories you hear and feel empowered to let your own ideas come to life. Hi, Dusky Terry with ITC Midwest again. As we conclude the 2022 Iowa Ideas Conference, I just want to extend a sincere thank you to the Gazette for creating this forum for such a positive high-level discussion, to all of the presenters and panelists for contributing to the debate, and certainly to all of you as active participants. I hope and trust that you found the experience to be worthwhile. So the big question for everyone is, now what? My challenge to you is to take the key questions and the big ideas that were generated at the conference and keep the momentum moving forward. That's the only way the best of these concepts become reality. Each session included discussion of positive ideas that can eventually become public policy if we work together to make it happen. So please continue to connect with those you've interacted with during our time together and keep the dialogue going. On behalf of all of us at ITC Midwest, thanks again for your participation in this year's conference. We hope to see you all again next year. Welcome back, everyone. And it's been a packed two days, but it's hard to believe, uh, you know, when you put this together over the course of a year that we're already at the closing keynote of the conference. Thanks again to our uh, sponsors, presenting sponsor, ITC Midwest, our keynote sponsors that you just heard from, UFG Insurance, our track sponsors, Kirkwood Community College, the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Inclusive ICR, Alliant Energy, and our media community and supporting sponsors. This wouldn't happen without all of their support and their work throughout the year. So thank you to all of them. As a media company, I'd be remiss if I didn't encourage you all to follow the Gazette's coverage of Iowa Ideas, as well as our in-depth journalism that our news division provides to Iowans every single day. As as we approach our 140th anniversary in January, I want to offer a sincere thank you for reading, subscribing, and supporting an employee-owned local media company. And now I'm turning it over to longtime sports editor J.R. Ogden, who will begin our closing conversation with Coach Dan Gable and Coach Clarissa Chun. J.R. Thanks, Zach. I appreciate it. 140 years. I just I haven't been here that long, but uh, pretty close. So uh, I appreciate, uh, number one, I appreciate Clarissa and Dan uh, joining us today. Um, and we're going to have a discussion about wrestling. Um, uh, there's a lot going on in the world of wrestling right now uh, that I think uh, is, is got some very interesting uh, scenarios going on that we might we want to talk about today. First, I want to just introduce the two of them. Uh, if you don't know, uh, Clarissa is the first uh, women's wrestling coach in University of Iowa history, the first women's coach in Power Five uh, college history. Um, she was hired almost a year ago, it was last November, uh, and she's also a four-time uh, U.S. champion. A five-time she was a five-time junior national champion, a two-time Olympian. Uh, 2008 uh, world gold medalist, and she won a bron Olympic bronze in 2012. Um, my next guest probably needs no introduction. Apologies to um, uh, David Letterman, but uh, Dan Gable um, is really well known in wrestling in this state and all over the country, really. Uh, Three-time high school state champion, two-time NCAA champion at Iowa State, uh, 72 gold medalist uh, in the Olympics, I didn't even know this myself till I looked it up today. He had six matches, three pins, and three uh, shutouts. Did not give up a point at the Olympics. I knew that, but I didn't know the, the other stuff. Uh, as a coach at Iowa, he coached for 21 seasons, and the Iowa won 21 uh, Big Ten team titles, 355 duels, and 15 NCAA titles. Um, pretty impressive stuff. So uh, we appreciate you guys being here, and hopefully we'll get some questions from our audience as well as Myself, I did send you some, so we hopefully we can get going here. Uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about a little bit is have you kind of explain your backgrounds in wrestling, how you got started, and what wrestling means to you, Clarissa? What, how did you get started in in wrestling? I know you were from, you're from Hawaii originally, um, and they actually had high school wrestling twenty years ago or so. 
Yeah. Um, I started judo when I was younger. So combat sports was like familiar to me and the wrestling high school wrestling coach would try to get me to do wrestling. And, but I was also swimming. So I considered myself a swimmer as well. And it was the same season in Hawaii, which was winter sport, which is weird, but, um, and I joined my junior year, the year that they sanctioned it as a high school sport in 1998 and never looked back. Um, really, it was the opportunities that was provided post high school. Um, Missouri Valley was the first college to offer a women's wrestling scholarship um, uh, at a college program. So the timing of that allowed me to say, you know what, wrestling's new to me. Um, Let's see where I go in this sport. Uh, I st- judo was still my love, and I felt like I wanted to do both at some time. But when I got into wrestling, I quickly f- realized, you know, I couldn't focus on both, but maybe I could utilize my judo techniques into wrestling. But yeah. All right, Dan, you probably can relate a little bit. I know you're. I know swimming was big to you too. Why, did, how why, how did you get started in wrestling? What does it meant to you? Oh, I was born into wrestling, <laughs> uh, obviously. Uh, City of Waterloo, Iowa, at that time was just dominating the sport. I mean, by the time I became uh, 14, 15 years old, uh, of the 12 state champions in Class A at that time, which was the bigger class, they used to have Class A and B, but uh, they had eight of the 12 state champions were from uh, Waterloo, Cedar Falls, or uh, East Waterloo area. So uh, my dad wrestled a little bit, but my mom's dad was second in the state, uh, you know, and my dad's best friend was the Buzzards, and they were uh, they were um, wrestling and doing really well, winning state championships and so on and so forth. So basically, uh, born into it, swimming, gave me an opportunity to expand my, uh, what I, what I could be good at. And I did really well in swimming, but, uh, when I was 12, I had to make a decision and really was the best decision to stick with wrestling. So why wrestling? I mean, what was it that, what was the appeal of wrestling that, uh, you know, this for both of you, obviously, but what was the appeal of wrestling that brought that not only hooked you, but kept you hooked for, you know, all these years. For me, Sorry, go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> Here you well, go. Okay, so for me, it was not waiting around to participate. Uh, even though in in the other sports, you know, you were participating, but you weren't always involved at all times. You might even be sitting in a dugout waiting for your turn uh, time to to hit a baseball. You know that type of thing. Uh, and then, in, you know, in football, you might be only on the offense. You might, might not be on the defense. But, you know, back in the young days, uh, you probably were on both. But you still uh, – there's a lot of team players. And it was the only time I realized that I could compete every second of the whole match, every second of the whole game. Even though there's other matches, it was, uh, it was me the whole time. And I really liked that aspect of it. How about you, yeah. Clarissa? Um, you know, I never, I only played one team sport growing up and it was water polo. And um, I think, you know, growing up doing judo and swimming, it really was like, you know, you, you know, like coach Brown says, you get what you earn, you know? Um, and wrestling hooked me because it was hard. You know, I, I enjoyed hard things and I just felt like the friendships and relationships and the bonds like that I've created with my team because of all the hard work, right? Like how close we became because of it, that kept me wanting to stay in the sport, you know, like um, the relationships and um, really what kept me in was the opportunities as well. Um, I knew I wasn't going to go very far in swimming because I, no matter how how hard I worked and no no matter how hard I felt like, you know, I'm just going to go faster, kick harder, pull stronger, whatnot, you know, Um, being 4'11 was 
didn't matter if I try to hit 10 strokes per their, per their one, if they're standing at five, nine or whatnot. And, um, really wrestling gave me an opportunity to be at my size and at my weight and be able to participate and, um, be competitive. So, yeah. Well, I, we're already getting questions, but I wanted, I wanted to, I wanted to kind of change the, the subject a little, a little bit and kind of talk about the theme that we, that I emailed you guys about was kind of the, you know, where is wrestling now? And obviously the biggest news, in my opinion, um, is the advent for, in Iowa, at least, uh, the new advent of, of women's wrestling, girls wrestling, and you being hired as, as the coach there. How's it going for you? I mean, you're almost a year into the job. How, how's it going for you there? Ah, uh, it's great. Uh, I love being able to get up every day and work with everyone on the team, the people I work with behind the scenes, like admin and everyone involved. It's like, honestly, everyone at the university has been so great to work with like-minded people wanting to move programs forward, you know, um, uh, get to work with coach Gary Mayab daily. And today coach Tanya Verbeek, our second assistant came in today. And so just continuing to build and see where we can go from here, you know, and represent the Hawkeyes to, to the standard of excellence it brings. So how many do you have on your team right now? We have 15. 15. So, yeah. All right. Um, so, you know, when this, when this announcement was made last year, everyone was always obviously very excited about it. Um, not only you, but the, you know, the, the, I think a lot of wrestling people were excited about it. Um, but, you know, and I think a lot of people thought, well, okay, other, somebody else is going to jump in. Somebody else is going to do it. You're the first power five school to have women's wrestling. Um, and to this day here, almost a year later, nobody else in power five has done that. Are you surprised by that? Are you disappointed by that? Why Why do you think that is? Um, I think there's a lot more that probably goes into it, you know, behind the scenes to make it happen. And I don't think that people, like, there aren't programs trying to make it happen. I think it's about, like, like how it will work and how it will unfold, I guess. I don't know. I was definitely ahead of the times here. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I'm taking it. I'm like, let's, it's great. I love it. I love the head start in that sense. I love the opportunities that um, young girls get to have now, um, but would like more to start get going so that way they can have more options and opportunities. Um, but yeah, I can't really say why, you know, I, I've heard like some programs get close and um then then it get like turned down for whatever reason i don't know but are you surprised are you, are you disappointed no i think there's you know like we're not going to quit, quit fighting right we're going to continue to do all the things we need to do to show like the growth of women's wrestling and why it needs to happen and it's not about a matter of it not happening it's a matter of when right and sometimes we can't rush that process. Sometimes we want it to happen quicker, right? But um, like like we say here, we want to do it right. We want to do it the right way. And then, you know, and I feel every day I'm learning, it's been nine months that I've been in this position and I continue to learn every day. And some days it feels like I'm, I'm, I'm like, how far did I get? You know, I feel like I'm like marching in place just very slowly, like, um, as much as I want to like get to this point now, I, I have to remind myself of everything's a process. And same with like, you know, women's wrestling, we're still emerging sports status, you know, and what that process and what that fight will be to get it to national championship status. So. Yeah. Dan, what do you say? I know you, you're still very, think, yeah. very involved yeah. in world, world wrestling and national wrestling. What do you, what's your oh, take on this? Oh, I think it's, it's, it's really easy for me to understand because somebody is doing it right now. The University of Iowa is doing it. So why not just follow them and see if it's going to go, number one, which it is. But number two, I can learn the ropes because they're going to be on display and we'll take all the answers from them. So people are busy. I mean, athletic directors, they have a lot to do. 
And, you know, if they're really smart, they'll make sure that they have a lot of people that are helping them to make sure that they just oversee, you know. And so, you know, for me, it's like Iowa University right now is on display and and in the wrestling program, and especially in the female wrestling program. And there's going to be a lot of things that happen that maybe shouldn't happen, but we hope not. But there's going to be a lot of things that do happen. So they're going to be able to eliminate some of those things that they did that they maybe shouldn't have. But that's kind of where I look at it. It's going to happen because it's not enrollment driven uh, at, at this top you know, power five. And the other schools are D2, D3, NAIA, and they all are enrollment driven and they are bringing on wrestling. We have a lot of female wrestling, but D1s, the top ones, they have to win in football. You know, they have to win. So they're spending their time and they're going to let us be the example so they don't have to spend all that time, which is okay. But, you know, it's happening fast and it'll be there quick. Are you surprised more haven't already jumped in? Uh, not really. It's kind of like when not the University of Iowa made a commitment to men's wrestling. You know, that's always had men's wrestling. But when they really made a commitment was when Kertlmeyer took over, when the, the AD got behind him, when I came from Iowa State, and all of a sudden we went from, you know, a few hundred people in the stands to 10, 15,000 people in the stands. So it can be like that. But it's uh, everybody's watching, and uh, it'll. I think we're on display, and I think we have a good setup. And so I don't think it'll take long once they see the positives. Once they see the positives. So one of the you know, I, this is one of one of the questions we can, we got from the audience too, and it's, it goes in line with what I was thinking is. You know, what's it going to take? Is and, and what is I? Is, do you know either of you know? Is is Iowa doing anything to? promote what your program with other big 10 schools with others, you know, in their, in the, in, in the big 12 and, and other conferences and things like that, or are, are, are they doing anything to kind of help push this along? Um, I mean, I've, I've heard some, some IVs reached out, you know, asking how, how has Iowa done it? And, you know, for me, I'm like, oh, that's above my pay grade. So I kind of just direct them <laughs> to our AD. So, um, <laughs> and, you know, our AD has talked with their AD and whatnot and trying to help them, you know, like explore what, what it took. Um, I do know that Ohio State University has a women's club program. Um, and so, but I don't, I'm not really sure what all entails and what needs to get done um, to make it happen. Um, I know there's like a a big coalition working on that to try to, um, you know, wrestle like a girl has done a really great job um, trying to get all 50 states sanctioning girls high school wrestling, you know, across the United States. And now you know, they're also trying to work on how they can provide opportunities at the collegiate level, you know, specifically division one programs and really helping educate the numbers, like the growth of women's wrestling. Like coach said, there's over 120 women's wrestling college programs. Most of them are division two, three and NAIA schools. There's only four that are division one. Um, and that includes Iowa. Um, But yeah, so I think it's like a lot of education and where the sport is heading. Um, And yeah, I'm not really into the weeds on that. But (laughs) But you're holding out hope that 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 someone to do it, Mm -hmm. Dan. But you know, you mentioned some of the things. You know, ads being so busy with football, obviously, is is the is the uh, uh, ten thousand pound gorilla in in everyone's room, right? And but there are also you know, the, the power five schools, they're going, they're talking about conference realignment. They're talking about expanding the football playoffs. There's a lot of things going on. Does that interfere with uh, something, you know, starting a new program at, at these different schools? Oh, I think it probably is a slowing down process. And it's one that they're going to work on what they really want to work on. And even though they should have other people and they do, the University of Iowa does. But like just now when uh, Clarissa said we got four 
D1 programs. Is that what she said? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I didn't know that, you know, so, you know, that's, that's already a, a good start, but uh, you know, I, I feel like it's gonna, it's gonna take, it's gonna take uh, cooperation between the program that's already there, which is of course Tom Brands' program. And it's gonna take uh, like good wrestlers. Uh, it, we don't wanna, and she's already got good wrestlers. Um, gotta make them better of course, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's more like uh, when they go and they get a chance to watch, they're gonna be entertained. I mean. I mean, we, our first year, I think we brought in Iowa State and they hadn't wrestled for, uh, you know, 40 years or something like that. And they, and, and they walked in like being probably the defending champions, maybe. And they walked in with this guy named Chris Taylor. And, you know, we had to send out a, our guy, Jim Washek, uh, you know, that weighed 200 pounds lighter, you know, and people, people get, get drawn. And there's, there's ideas there that Kurtlemeyer, you know, he, he would actually be great in the in the press room where he would talk about things and he would actually you know, like to the University of Michigan. He he called them out. You know, we don't like the University of Michigan. You know, we're and, and so all of a sudden we had 10,000 fans come to see a brawl, you know, but it wasn't really a brawl. It was just a good wrestling and people enjoyed themselves. So, the, you know, the wrestling team is, you know, you take some things that uh, you learn in the past, the female wrestling and you make sure that you, you can get an audience and uh, and then you have entertainment. And that's the good wrestling part. It's not like uh, I, I'm not, not so sure how long we've been wrestling female wrestling, but it's been a long, it's been quite a while, actually. Mm -hmm. And it just hasn't gotten into the colleges until, you know, last few years, whereas it was going worldwide at the USA level. So there is a lot. But at the same time, with new programs. Uh, they're not all going to be like the, the girls you're recruiting. Uh, you know, you, you know, you're getting some probably pretty talented gals. And so it's, you know, you're going to have to have uh, uh, people come and, and, and really be entertained. You know, that's just the bottom line, good wrestling, good excitement. Uh, you might have to do, you might have to, co you know, even uh, figure out how to, intermingle it with some of the man the man's already uh the brown's programs because you know he's got good wrestlers very good wrestlers and you know and and his isn't even at the top of the list right now you got penn state you got and you got michigan but you got a lot of other ones too and so you know who knows what you might have to do to be able to just catch somebody's eye throw in a match here or there you know and initially and get those people rocking and a rolling <laughs> like, uh, that's uh, one of the questions I did have, Clarissa, is, and is maybe you can answer this. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you guys haven't decided. How are you going to kind of roll out? Are you going to do, um, do, you see, uh, do you see a future where the men, you know, men, men, women to have a duel on the same night or, you know, you alternate or may, are the national tournament going to be the same play? I mean, if, if, once we get to that point, which we will eventually, we all hope, um, do, do you have any idea or do you have any thoughts on what you would like to see um, how this goes forward? Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, I mean, people have asked that and I thought, I think that would be cool if we were side by side, but it would change, you know, the, the pace of it and everything, you know, and that I think one thing that um, maybe a lot of people might not know or might forget that is women's wrestling is going to look different than men's wrestling, not simply because we were ponytails and whatnot but that our rules are different we wrestle freestyle rules international rules and then the men's collegiate wrestle folk style so it you know if we're side by side it might look a little bit confusing you know from one match to the next and whatnot so not really sure it might it probably won't be side by side you know if 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 anything maybe hopefully same day at some time like maybe if we're earlier and they're like evening kind of thing I, we're we're not sure we're those are the things that we talk about on like how to you know roll out like what would it look like for the first time you know and how to best educate you know the fans you know that might not be as familiar familiar with freestyle roles 
you know, because the rules do change a little bit more frequently than folk style rules. Um, I know since um, a couple of years ago, there's like little rule changes in the freestyle side, but um, not anything major. But since I competed, it's changed quite a bit since I when I was competing. So um, that will be the challenging part of, of that aspect. Okay. One of the questions we got here, uh, Clarissa, for you specifically was, you know, um, when did you start learning about the Iowa wrestling tradition? Dan's talked a bit about it. You know, he's he's touched on it a few times. When did when did you learn about University of Iowa wrestling? <laughs> oh, man. So when I started wrestling in 1998, um, you know, uh, University of Iowa was winning national titles and, um, you know, we watched Vision Quest. Our coach had us watch Iowa wrestling, you know, um, and even fast forward past down like the season, you know, the ESPN, the season documentary. Um, so I followed the University of Iowa wrestling. I mean, you know, coach had a dynasty, you know, and and even though it was late 80s, there was they were winning national titles year after year. And I wanted to. I don't know. This is kind of weird. It's weird because Coach Gable is here. Like I actually applied. To, I applied to the University of Iowa when I was a senior in high school. I got in. I wanted to come wrestle here, knowing that they don't have women's wrestling. I thought maybe okay, I could be a manager, be around the program. You know, um, I just wanted to be around like a successful program. You know, it's it's just like the people I get to work with day in and day out, you know, wanting to be around like-minded people who want to succeed, you know, and excel. And I think it's funny because I, I have this, you know, from like our Senate, you know, like I um, like won something in high school and in it, and I have it in here because I grabbed it from home and it will say like that I was going to come to the university of Iowa, not to wrestle, but in hopes to, want to wrestle you know like <laughs> like and that was before Missouri Valley was like ever a, like sent a packet saying hey we're offering women's wrestling you know um and as a scholarship program so um yeah that was like in May when I got that and then Missouri Valley wrote a note to recruit me in June so then I pivoted to go to Missouri Valley but yeah my um yeah who didn't want to be a hot guy <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah and one of the things you know dan has mentioned is the entertainment part of this too right because that was one of the things and you know dan and i go back many years when i was i was covering wrestling full time and, and and got to know him and they had a certain reputation of the way they wrestled and the, inter the entertaining was a big part of that it was you know i was not call it whatever you want to it was you know aggressive it was uh, you know, pushing, pushing, pushing all the time. Mm -hmm. Are you, are you doing, are you going to do that with the, your, your Hawkeye women's program? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's funny because they, you know, when I recruited the athletes, they're like, Oh yeah, we want to be Iowa style, you know? And, and I think it's more in their minds, like they're gritty in that way. You know, they all have their own style. Cause I can, I can't say that, you know, our, all of our athletes across the board, like pushes and pressures and whatnot. Um, we, they're all so different, you know, and, and I don't want to change them, you know, um, not in, not, especially if it's working for them, you know? So, um, I think we want to keep that mentality of, of that, you know, as far as like the domination and let's put it on them and like, we work hard, you know, like coach, met our team two weeks in you know and um had them talk to our pro, uh, all our team and called them out you know and said hey this no stalling making sure that you're the one that's not out there stalling go go get go score go get some points you know and that's that's the mentality you know so we'll take so and yeah that's yeah so much to be learned <laughs> So Dan, you you talked to the women's team already, and and I know that for a while there, that was kind of part of your your role when you were still uh, employed by the university. I guess as you were going around, is is that something uh, 
you gave a, you gave him a, a, some advice, I guess, to go and go to get this thing going, right? Well, at the at the museum in Waterloo, we actually uh, had a little conversation up there. But I'm interested to know right now because you know this is a big deal to me because uh, this saved wrestling somewhat, uh, and so if we're in a uh, a battle or if we're in a decision making process, are there any schools right now that are the high schools? Do all of them wrestle freestyle, or are there some scholastic wrestling going on out there uh, uh, at that level? Because that's interesting to me that you know that you know we do go to an event and. Now they got to learn two styles, which is all right, but I, I don't know what we've already started with the females in terms of freestyle and scholastic wrestling. And this, so this is a question to Clarissa, actually. Uh, are there, uh, what is the style that they wrestle at the high school level? It's folk style, I think. What? Yeah, it's folk <laughs> style. I think the state of New York wanted a was trying to play around whether or not they wanted to try to make it freestyle in the state of New York. But I think um, it, it's, it's folk style. It's just. Um, how do we know, end up in college switching styles? Well, yeah. You know, like when I, when I went to college, I didn't know freestyle, you know? It, wow. Um, yeah. And, and, but then that was, that was also, 22 years ago too right so um and you know wrestling is wrestling to a certain extent right, right. like exactly. um so but yeah um they do you know the a lot of our athletes here you know have wrestled freestyle you know most like i would say all but maybe one but yeah have freestyle experience you know um because they 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 wrestle year round, you know, like. But they um, didn't have the opportunity to wrestle scholastic style in high school, the ones that you yeah. got here. Yeah, they wrestled folk style. They, oh, yeah. they did. They okay. did. Yeah. So they yeah. actually understand it a little bit. Then, okay. Yeah, some yeah. of them did. Some of them had like unconventional, like high school route where they, they didn't like compete for their high school programs, maybe because their state didn't have. Um, girls wrestling and they just focused on freestyle you know um but like or we have two from wyoming seminary program so they wrestled freestyle the whole time while they're at wyoming seminary up in pennsylvania because they were all freestyle up there mm -hmm. and um they didn't wrestle in like the high school system they competed like internationally and um coach van de Veer up there um found opportunities to take them to different like um, freestyle tournaments like Super 32 or Journeyman, um, and um, so that that we get, they would get competition in freestyle. So, so all which, college is freestyle on every level, two Division two, Division three, yep. uh, NAIA. Yeah, and all, high, and all high school is basically scholastic. Yet, yeah. Mm, so I, I think we got some work to do there, don't we? Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. And I and yeah. and I think like and people get so confused about, about that, you know, like how did college get to be freestyle, you know? And I really think Missouri Valley, you know, cause I was one of, I was the first part of that program and the a head coach of the men's program was the one that was like, wanted to create that opportunity for women and really enrollment driven. Right. And um, there was no other college programs to compete against. So it's like, we would go to Sunkiss Open, Dave Schultz, you know, Dave Schultz International Tournament, U.S. Open, and they were all freestyle. So that's why he kept it freestyle, because if we went folk style, then what other programs would we compete against? And it was his idea of wanting to give us opportunities to try to get on that national and world level. Yeah. OK, well, it makes, it, it makes recruiting a little tougher, though. Yeah, you know, it, it struck me. I I get emails saying like, Coach, I am a three time state champion. Would have been fourth, but COVID happened. You know, and it's um. Oh, I I would ask. Oh, what kind of experience do you have in freestyle? 
oh no I only wrestle high school you know like so yeah it, like <laughs> yeah so we got some work to do don't we yeah yeah, yeah. Dan, you had mentioned uh, briefly in the in your when you were talking about you know women's wrestling save wrestling in a sense. You were you know I can't remember how many years ago it was. It seems like it was not long ago when the Olympics dropped wrestling. Or 2012, drop wrestling. 2013, something like that. And yeah. and you were and you were at the forefront of saving the sport. How much did women's the, the you know advent of women's? I know they added at least a a couple of weights I think uh, to the Olympic program in. in how much did that did that save the sport and give especially on the Olympic level? Uh, well, I think the Olympic level, it was uh, you know obviously the thing that made the difference. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I just I I just think that uh, if we hadn't already had Olympic freestyle wrestling for females, that we would have been that much further down. And we, we had some fresh air there that gave us opportunity that we wouldn't have had. And so I, I call it, they saved us, but you know, it's, it's, but it's, you know, it's not over yet just because there's a lot of little decisions to be made and, and maybe they're not so little. And that's why I was kind of talking to Clarissa about that, that different style thing. So I, um, uh, you know, I give uh, a lot of credit to going back and when we started back in, I'm not sure when the first world championship that we had for women's, but it was kind of difficult because we started at the high end and worked down and it's usually start at the low end and work up, but uh, you know, it's, uh, it's going good. We just, I think there's little things that they have to uh, make sure that happen uh, for the future. It, one of the I'll go back here. One of the questions we've got several from several different of the people watching uh, in on us is is about recruiting. What you know, Clarissa, you mentioned about you know, the the women's team recruiting. What um, and good to kind of feed off what you you two were talking about is the freestyle folk style. And you said wrestling is wrestling, but how difficult is it to take a of someone who's done nothing but folk style and teach them the freestyle? It would, it would mainly be like mat work, you know, like the parterre or referee's position. That would be the biggest change, I think, you know, because takedowns are takedowns, you know, in freestyle, they can get four points. I used to joke around with Jaden Ironman, you know, like he would be like throwing people. I'm like, ah, oh, dang, too bad it wasn't freestyle because that would have been four points. But <laughs> um, <laughs> once it gets on the mat, you know, we can lock hands and things are a little bit different on on the mat wrestling part of it. Mm -hmm. Have you been? Have you found it difficult uh, to 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 have some of these women make this transition uh, to the freestyle, or is it just like you say? Is it just just wrestling? No, you know, most of like I would say, pretty much all of our athletes have freestyle background, so they are very familiar. I, you know, am lucky. I, Iowa, you know, is the first and only Power Five Division One, you know program right now you know that I had the benefit of um being able to have junior world champion on our team and a cadet two-time cadet world medalist on our team and you know we got we have two going to U23 worlds tomorrow um so and one's on a senior national team so um we do have quite a bit of experience on our team in the freestyle okay. sense yeah okay. So, you know, the, as the only power five school, you've got the recruiting all to yourself. Nobody else to com nobody, nobody else to compete with. Right. Kind of like when Dan was coaching, winning all those national titles, everyone wanted to wrestle for him. <laughs> no, yeah. I, you know, and it has to be a right fit. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I would say I didn't go after all of them. I'll say that it has to be a right fit for the program, you know, and, and, you know, that is no one person is bigger than the program. So I didn't want to deal with that, you know, um, and in that sense, because we're a team, we're a program. Um, yeah, we're an individual sport in that sense, but we need the team to be there to push each other forward and lift each other up when needed. So um, there are some that I missed out on, but it all happened for a reason. Yeah. That kind of you can relate to that, Dan. I mean, you obviously you had the pick of the 
your uh, a crop when you were when you were coaching. Um, and I know you know you told me one time the one of the biggest things you had to uh, come to grips was not everyone was like you. Not everyone had the same attitude you had, and so you had to, to learn to coach certain people certain different ways. Yeah, you know, I I pr- probably took things for granted a little bit and just thought our program was that effective that I really didn't have to go out and study some recruits and just get in anybody and we'll make them, you know, and I then uh, that's not really true, you know, so it took a while, but, you know, once I realized that, uh, you know, if you go out and do a really good job recruiting, that just makes it a little bit easier for your work, what you have to do. But uh, again, I think one of the biggest things that made a difference is always every year making sure that you had at least one guy in that room that was a leader to the point that everybody kind of looked up to him and he could kind of feed down to everybody. And the years that if we didn't have that leader, uh, it's just, we lost, we lost some direction and some, uh, what we needed to really be good, uh, you know, that example. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that it got, actually, we won a lot before I got off my butt and went out and recruited hard, you know, I, you know, just because we had so many good things going for us, you know, and the, what what's going for us was our style and, and people enjoyed it. And you, you had the crowd and, and then you, uh, you, they did feed off each other. But, you know, once that you realize that if you don't have a leader in that room, then, you know, you got to be the leader. And, I mean, I'm the coach. Yeah, I'm a leader, but I'm not out there. You're not watching me perform except, you know, yelling or, or you know, doing showing some skill work and, and things like that. And I think, you know, when I was first at Iowa, yeah, I could – I was 23 when I came over to Iowa and I could still wrestle for another 10 years hard, you know, and be an example there as well. And I was an assistant coach for four years. So I was probably five or six years as a head coach and I could still probably show the style of wrestling that I thought was really effective over everybody else. But, you know, once you get to a certain age or even earlier on, if you want to save your body a little bit, you know, you have to uh, recruit people, you know, people like I bring in Barry Davis, you know, I mean, he was like the first guy out to wrestle, but he was like an example of what we wanted right away. And it did affect the other team members, but you know, you affect the other team as well when you have that leader or that style that you've been talking about the Iowa style a little bit. And uh, that is a mental game with your opponents and wrestling is definitely a mental game. Yeah. Well, Chris, have you had some, uh, some step up and uh, you have leaders in your room? Yeah. You know, that's the challenge, right? Like um, maybe they feel like their leaders based off of their previous performances internationally or whatnot, but might feel a little um, like, Am I good enough to be a leader? You know, I will say, you know, I have 12 freshmen, right? So that's that's the challenge, right? I don't have, like, everyone to this program is new. So there's not one person being able to show them how it's done or what it's about or to kick their butts, you know, like from an upperclassman. Um, and, you know, I do have, like, three transfer upperclassmen, you know, that, you know, like, maybe one has that ability to be able to do that, Um and really trying to help her to, you know, probably f- try to fill that role as a leader, you know, because of her experience and her maturity. And, you know, she is, comes from a program that won, you know, in our division is called NCWWC National Championships with her former team that she graduated from. Um, uh, yeah, so that's, that's, you know, all in this process of building culture, um, getting the program started, um, having conversations with um, certain athletes, we see that could 
be leaders that, you know, we just need to help empower them to be like, speak up and be that leader within the, within the team, you know? So are you still good on the mat with them? Yeah. <laughs> we had matches today and I had to go with one of them for a brief moment. And, yeah. <laughs> I'm you don't hurting. look too beat up. <laughs> yeah. My joints, coach, my joints feel it. I'll say that. <laughs> well, you know what? The one thing that you can do, though, is it doesn't always have to be on the mat because it can be that you're the first one there at work. You're the last one home. You're the hardest worker. You know, it's just, they're, they're going to take on your work ethic, you know, right. and, and, and they're going to take on, you know, what a lot of your attitude is. And uh, when you preach something, it's, it's one thing, but at, your actions will definitely make the difference. And uh, they'll notice it because it's not like I'm here one day. It's like I'm here every day, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that'll, that makes a difference even when uh, you can't kick their butt. <laughs> yeah. I know. Uh, no, uh, no, 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 you're good. Sorry, go ahead. No. Uh, here's a question from um, one of the audience. Uh, you both achieved the Olympics, the highest level of sport. It certainly didn't come easy. Where did you draw your motivation from? Uh, what do you say to someone facing barriers or challenges in their own motivation? You want me to go? Yeah, go. Yeah, I'll go. Uh, you know, my motivation came a lot from the people I was around early on. So, you know, it's family, uh, friends, YMCA, coaches. Uh, and then as, it, as you got to a higher level, the highest level out there, who's the highest level? Well, right now uh, and for the last 70 years, the Russians. I mean, they and they can't even wrestle now. Well, they can, you know, but they can't go to the events, at least the events that are uh, worldly. But, you know, it's like I got a poster on the wall, beat the Russians. You know, that's uh, my daughter has it now at her house. But that doesn't mean I still don't like to look at that poster, you know, that type of thing. So there's got to be things around. So you, you go to the highest level that you can look at. So right now, people are looking at the University of Iowa's wrestling program uh, female and the men, the men's program, because they've been very, very good. And that's where people that really want to uh, have the right attitude and desire. You got to look up to who and where you want to be and even above that. So that's who you want to beat or you want to, you know, that's if that's the type of program that you want, or if that's what you want as a person. And Clarissa obviously is in a position of authority uh, that she, she wants to, uh, not only promote the, the great sport of wrestling, but she, she'd like to have a, you know, get some, uh, progress in, in her sport, but more than that, she wants to bring home the trophies. You know, she wants some girls to, the girls win, they, she wins. And so you, you got to look at inside, uh, for motivation. Otherwise, you know, if you don't have that inspiration and motivation, and if you don't, JR, if you don't care if people read your articles or not, you know, or if they don't care if they tune into this stuff, then we're probably not going to have the best opportunity to be successful. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's about, it's about that internal uh, awareness and that feeling you get from actually being successful too. So you, it's, 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 you don't want to knock your head against the, the wall all the time. You, you want to be able to uh, have some success and to have it what it feels like because it feels good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Clarissa, what about you? What do you what, what's been your motivation? Yeah, I'm like Coach Gable. I think when I was younger, you know, like I didn't start wrestling at a young age, but I got into judo because my brother would, would bring home trophies. And I'm like, oh, I want a trophy, you know, swimming, they only give you ribbons, you know? <laughs> um, so it was like definitely external motivation when I was younger. Um, but I was also just really competitive um, and just wanted to get after it, you know, and beat people like whether in the swim race or in judo. And when I got into wrestling, the same. And then, so it became more about like, 
like, like see what I got, what can I give, right? Like, what can I do? And then the, the more I got on the international and senior scene, it, it was about what does my best look like? Like, how far can I go if I really put everything into it? Um, and I think Yanni said it best, right? Um, right before the world championships that he, like, if you asked him a, a, a year ago, he wanted to be like a world champion, Olympic champion, but changing that mindset to like seeing what his best would be like you know yeah that's the goal you know and that's how it was for me like yeah obviously I wanted to be a world champ Olympic champ you know because you know wrestling's too hard to like just do it for fun <laughs> and it was fun you know it was fun at moments right those winning moments are definitely the most fun moments but also like you know sharing with our athletes like how deep of an understanding can we get in understanding what we're doing you know like are we um are we training and studying for a test and training for a competition or are we just, are we training for understanding? Are we studying for understanding? The more we can understand, the better we can be and bring our best selves out there. So trying to take away like the outcome of that, right? Like obviously when training, you know, we want to achieve that, but along the way, the process has to come from within in, in the sense of like, what what could my best be like? What could I be better at today? You know, so that that was my motivation. Well, we're getting down to the last ten minutes, or less, probably less than ten minutes here. So, you know, one of the things that you know we talked about, or I talked about when I when I we just set this thing up was, what does the future look like in wrestling? What what does the future hold uh, for this sport? I mean, the men's programs went through and you know and to a point still are um struggling it's at certain schools and and, and it's uh, uh when schools are given budget issues they that's one of the things they drop women's is just coming onto the scene what what does the and i'm not talking just male or female wrestling i'm talking the sport of wrestling what what does the future look like in your mind what are we talking um, today? all right go ahead yeah, I mean, I think, you know, women's wrestling is continuing to grow. So I I don't know, I can't speak on boys or men's wrestling, you know, and and really it like it's blown up in the state of Iowa, you know, like the opportunities for girls wrestling here at the high school age group. Um and who knows, you know, with like I you know, and I hate bringing this up because like the rise of MMA, right? It has like opened maybe opportunities for people to get into the sport as a route you know I say that because I do have an athlete on our team who is an MMA fighter um Bella Mir you know her father was a world champion UFC fighter right and she wanted to come to University of Iowa to better her skills and compete for University of Iowa she didn't want to go anywhere else you know she's competitive um it's interesting because she doesn't see herself like she's a completely different wrestler as she is a fighter. So like trying to help her bring that fight to the mat per se. But um, I don't know. I, I'm curious on on the evolution of that, like maybe helping the growth of continuous growth of women's wrestling. But. Yeah, uh, I just think there's a lot yet that we have to solve why we're promoting and moving forward. Because when you solve these little issues, whatever we have, it makes it go a lot, go a lot smoother. And so I think that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, th that we don't have a lot of, uh, you know, why isn't Iowa State having it right now or you and I or, you know, right in our state of Iowa. I mean, if they just added it on, we'd have our own little, uh, state of Iowa, and we'd be doing pretty well because I think it kind of feeds out of here. I mean, I look back at what just the rise of the University of Iowa wrestling did to the overall atmosphere because it brought people, it brought attendance, it brought spectators, it brought it brought excitement. Uh, you know, and it's, it, it 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 made a, a big difference. I you know I think it's uh, you know really important that that you know, that we uh, 
do really well right now at, at the University of Iowa. And obviously, uh, Tom Brands has, has a lot to do to just make sure because, you know, the state of Pennsylvania came to Iowa and got Kale Sanderson, you know, and and uh, even though he was, I believe, from uh, Utah, but but originally, but, you know, he, he was his dad was a, a, a the coach and and, uh, you know, it's just it's kind of the same way. It's kind of uh, uh, every, you know, people are watching uh, to see how easy, not easy, but how smooth what's the transition are, what the mistakes are that are made. So they have to limit it. So it's like the relationship between, you know, the man and the woman and, and the program here between Tom and, 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 and Clarissa to me, you know, is, is very important. Um, you know, it's, um, it's I already look, and I think we have a, an organization, the NWCA National Wrestling Coach Association with Mike Moyer, who has been on the move for several years. And he went from a kind of a one man show to probably 30 people involved in his program, which Every time we get a school adding wrestling, whether it be girls or boys, you know, it's it's man or woman, it's it's really important. And we're seeing that all the time. And a lot of that has to do with somebody else. You know, I think it's you that is, you know, it's going to make a difference on, you know, how the, where the fans come in. Uh, but it's going to take, more than you. It's going to take probably a, a collaboration between you and, and the men's program just a little bit, you know, that type of stuff. So, I mean, you want to have your own identity, but you also want to be smart when you already have a, a program that's built and sold out and isn't happy with being number three in the country. You know, that's, that's, that's so valuable uh, to uh, the future. Uh, so that's kind of what, you know, what I think, and I'm not in like su such a hurry to see other programs add as I'm, I'm in more of a watch to see how it can work. And, uh, I think it's working, but not in the power five right now, obviously, but I'm telling you, they're watching. They are watching and we will be the model for that. If things go really well, we will be the model. So that's very valuable. And I'm proud to be a, uh, a involved with that because that was, that's been my life. Even though I'm now watching grandkids play b baseball, football, you know, but but I'm watching both boys and girls, even though we have 10, well, the tent's coming yet, but it's in the belly, <laughs> but, but, you know, we got four girls and, and nine uh, boys, but, you know, and so I, I'm, I'm watching the other sports as well, but I'm, I'm telling you my attitude from wrestling, the disciplines and how our sport works, it works on every sport and it works better because I'm not going to accept certain things in certain sports because they have an acceptance rule. My rule is, okay, if you're going to bunt, yeah, you're going to sacrifice that guy to second and third, and you get a pat on the ass for being successful, but why didn't you get on first? <laughs> no, that's, that's where I'm at. So I'm, I, I think it's valuable to what I what I've learned in my sport to be able to carry over to other sports and help them to a higher level of success, you know. And so uh, I think wrestling is unique from that. And that's kind of, uh, you know, very seldom did I come off the mat, you know, getting my butt kicked or I guess I never did get my butt kicked too bad, <laughs> but even losing and not, didn't come back strong, didn't come back strong. So uh, it's something that that uh, uh, I'm hoping happens here, and all of a sudden we do this thing next year, and we got ten more, you know, female programs in in the Power Five. Or when I said ten, I I mean thirty. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys very much. It's 120, so we're we're done. And I I really appreciate uh, the conversation today, and and you two joining us. Uh, it means a lot to us uh, at the Gazette, and uh, and for for the Iowa ideas. And um, uh, you guys were fantastic, and I and I appreciate that. I know Zach wants to. Uh, close things out here. But thank you very much from me uh, and from the Gazette. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, JR. And thank you, Coach Gable and Coach Chun. Uh, Thank you for everything that you're doing to build the the sport and to put Iowa, continue to put Iowa on the map. And I think three years into the Zoom lifestyle, this may have been the most intense Zoom meeting I've I've seen. So I appreciate the passion (laughs) and the drive. And that was um, intense. (laughs) <laughs> that was just nice. coach was coach good. i was like that I, wasn't me <laughs> i have a different leadership style i guess i'm much <laughs> but no i you know on, on behalf of of iowa ideas i want to say thank you to our participants this brings a, a close uh to uh, iowa ideas 2022 i want to give a big thanks to the team at the gazette it takes a lot to pull this off uh the 50 sessions 245 panelists it's a year-long mm-hmm. planning effort thank you on behalf of of, to, to my entire team uh, that has helped put that together. Uh, and then to our track leads and those who have participated as advisory council members to help give us the ideas and connect us to panelists. Thank you as well. Uh, also, thank you to everybody as we continue to put out a news product and a, a, a newspaper tomorrow uh, while still hosting an event. Um, so thank you. Uh, for everyone else, we will be posting the sessions uh, starting next week at iyideas.com. Uh, and that will be the home as we start to plan for next year. Uh, and for coverage from the conference, uh, you'll find it there at iyideas.com. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you next year. Thank you.